Creation is out right now, and you're here because you're doing the live at Much More Music tonight. Much More Music live at 7 p.m. Wow. And all your fans are very happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, one thing I love about you is you're a powerful woman. You're beautiful. You're a sex symbol, oh, but you, you never no, <laughs> you never cross the line, though. Like, you're very classy. She sold over 30 million albums worldwide. Wow. She's intelligent, beautiful. When was that? A lot of albums, eh? Do you ever sit and think, wow, how did I sell that many albums? Yeah, I never think of the numbers, but it's just uh, really overwhelming, you know, when someone reminds you of, um, of facts like this one, it's just unbelievable. The most important thing is that I feel that I'm not alone, you know, that I've had um, the company of my fans that have been accompanying me through this artistic search and through so many years of the career, and I think that's gonna, uh, it's a relationship that I hope last for many many years so it will. <laughs> it will hopefully amen now one thing you always hear about you hear people say about you is that you're extremely grounded and down to earth so how do you maintain that amidst everything traveling around the world and being so successful mm, well to me it's fundamental to have my family around mm -hmm. me i travel with my brother um for example he's my guardian angel and uh I used to travel with my dad and mom a lot in the past, but they, they kind of got tired of this. <laughs> so they're like, you go, let us, leave us alone. <laughs> but um, it has been very important for me to be surrounded by people who not only love me for uh, what I represent, but for what I am who you in reality. Are. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's key, I think. And you're the youngest of eight siblings? That's right. I'm the last effort. That's amazing. <laughs> though, like, I'm the youngest of four, and I can't imagine. That's great to have so many siblings. Though. What was that like growing up, being the youngest? Well, it was sort of an unusual situation because I was the youngest of, of a really big family, but mm -hmm. also I was the only child in my mom's marriage, you know, because my, my dad married my mom. Uh, now the noise begins. Oh, no. Wow, was that? All your fans People are outside? Oh, oh yeah. my God. I have to say hi. We will. We will. <laughs> Freezing cold. It's freezing. It's like minus. I don't know what out there. <laughs> wow, that's love. love Thank you. you, guys. <laughs> wow. What's you were saying about growing up being the youngest? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the only child of my mom's marriage, with my dad, which was uh, my dad's second marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I grew up re being really close to my siblings, the rest of my siblings, and that's the evidence right there. You know that yeah. one the, over there? That's my brother. Where is he in the Donnie. shirt? <laughs> wait, Donnie. wait with the camera. <laughs> he's very shy, though, so don't ask him any question because he's going to run Aww. away as fast as he can. <laughs> but it must be so great, though, to have that support. Yeah, As yeah. you said, have your brother with you. Very, very important. Now, we actually have an email question that we're going to get to. Okay. Okay, and this is from Frank in Ottawa. Uh -huh. And he says, my question is, at any point growing up in Colombia, did you imagine becoming the sensation that you are and having the ability to affect and change the way you have for children of your war-ravaged country? Um, you know, this is going to sound a bit strange, but I, since the very moment I remember I exist, I was, I was always dreaming about traveling the world and I knew that I was going to be somehow a public figure. I, 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 I was in love with music and I knew, call it, you can call it a premonition, I don't know yeah, what it is. I, I'm not usually that metaphysical, you know, but, but yeah, I would think that there was some kind of instinct inside me that was telling me what I was what I was designed for, you know, and I really wanted to, to make music and I, I, I thought I was going to be a writer, you know, mm -hmm. but somehow that's what I do because I'm a songwriter. But um, uh, probably the fact that my dad was a, a writer as well, he is a writer, um, that was a huge um, influence on me, mm -hmm. a, a huge visual reference. And I remember when I was seven years old, I, I asked Santa Claus to bring me a typewriter. Really? And that's how I started writing my first, you know, poems and prose. Um, and later on, I did my, my first song when I was eight, and that's how my whole career it's started. Unbelievable. Then you started the guitar at 11. Yeah. Musical <laughs> prodigy. Oh, not so right? much. But <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's talent comes naturally, though. Like you said, it's something that you just felt inside of you, and that's where you are where you are, right? Yeah, well, you know, I've been trying just to improve every day. Every mm -hmm. day is, is a, it's a process, it's a learning curve. Um, of course, I, I don't like at all my first album, you know, or my second album. Uh, but from my third album on, things started to get. Um, a bit uh, more representative of mine, and, and uh, it's, been, it's been a process. 
So what is it like going back home now? Because you're like the biggest <laughs> music star today. So what is it like when you go back there? Do you have it's like paparazzi nice. following you? or? Yeah, well, paparazzi are all over the place. Uh -huh. Miami, everywhere. That's why I live in an island today. I love yes. living in Nassau. Hey! Oh, yeah. Besitos! Uh, but I am... Um, living in the Bahamas. What was I saying? You were living in the Bahamas, yeah. right? Yeah, I live in the Bahamas. <laughs> I live in the Bahamas and it's great, you know. Mm -hmm. I can literally go in my pages to the supermarket. That's what I read, so it's yeah. true. It's true. Okay, because which is something I can't do in Colombia today. They'd be taking pictures, right? Exactly. So there's other some, some funny things I read on the internet because there's so many fun facts about you. So I wanted to know <laughs> one of them was you shopping in your pajamas. So that's true. So we're gonna take a look at some other ones. So okay. it says that you spend most of your time, your spare time, color coordinating your closet. Is that true? <laughs> Well, that's one of my new habits, you know, really? as I'm approaching my 30s, which is still, you know, I still have two, two more years to go, but <laughs> things are starting to change within me, you know, uh -huh. and I noticed that now I enjoy, for example, doing my own gardening and color coordinating my closet when I was a mess, you know, like five years ago, I used to like throw my shoes in the middle <laughs> of the living room and now I'm like becoming this like, neat organ. Yeah, very neat, mm -hmm. you know, which is weird. <laughs> it's good. I don't know where this is going to take me. Um, and I have these weird things like, like I love China, for example, and picking good China, you know. But these are like, I'm it's starting to be good. Yeah, I'm turning into my mom, I think. <laughs> That's a good thing. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> now, this is one more that I read. You've been drinking coffee for so long that you need at least 20 cups to stay awake? No, that's not okay, right. Okay, I read that. I'm like, because I could never drink 20 cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could if I'm working, you know, late, until late hours and if I'm falling asleep, yeah. But what I say is that I would have to drink 20, 20 cups of coffee if I wanted to do any kind of effect on me. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I'm so used to drinking coffee since I was a baby. Since I was two years old, they've been feeding me with coffee. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I've read been... in the baby bottles? No, not in the that's baby bottles. That's, what, that's, what, that's no. what they wrote when, in the article. As soon as I learned how to grab <laughs> and hold the cup, then I started drinking coffee, but just one cup a day. Okay. Of course, I can't start my day if I don't have a cup of coffee. Uh -huh. Colombian coffee. Colombian coffee. With some skim milk, skim milk now. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I don't drink that much. No, Not anymore. I just need one a day. That's one it. A day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think your fans need you right now because they're waiting outside in the cold. They probably need some coffee too. So do you want to go say hello? That's to them? great. Yeah. Let's go outside. Look, they're all snapping with their cameras. Oh, no. Right now, Shakira's gonna talk to her. Let me say something. We're gonna check out her video. Sharpie. Don't bother. Here it is, Shakira. Back it up, guys. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Much On Demand. Still here with Shakira and still bananas in here. Now, Shakira, I took all your liner notes, right? I was looking at them, and there's a beautiful okay. picture of you inside. A beautiful picture. Oh, thank you. Okay. And uh, look at that, eh? Sorry, sorry, I don't have to hold that there. Look at that. Now, now, now I was wondering, is this the tree of knowledge here? Is that supposed to be the tree of knowledge? Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah, that's it. So my question is, are, you like, it. you're holding the fruit. Are you the forbidden fruit there, or is it, like, what's the metaphor here? It's, it's for free interpretation, you know? Okay. I think that's the function of art. Okay. Everyone can get to their own conclusion, conclusions. But, um... I, I probably wanted to imply that uh, that Eve also had a, an oral fixation, okay. you know, because okay. if she would have not bitten the forbidden fruit, we would still be in paradise, okay. right? So she had an oral fixation, okay. like all of us, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so metaphorically speaking, you might kind of be Eve there, which is I kind am of, Eve there. Okay, which I'll is... I'll you my okay, new okay. sort of Eve. No, I am Eve. Okay. Ah, no. no, it's kind of ironic because coincidentally a lot of people tell me, I kind of look like Adam, so it was just kind of funny. It was kind yeah. of ironic there. I think you and I are the perfect it, couple. It was kind of ironic. <laughs> anyway, your album, Oral Fixation, uh, Volume 2, is your first English album in like four years, right? Yeah. And uh, the Spanish one, the counterpart, how do you say it? How do you say Fijación it? Oral. I, I said like Spanish 50 album? times over there. Yeah. How do you say Fijación? it? Fijacion. Fijacion. Oral. Oral. Okay. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, you're so good. Your first uh, <laughs> Spanish album in seven years. So you had some time off. You got engaged. I was wondering, how have you grown as a person during that time off? No, no time off at all. <laughs> you know, I know people might think that I might have been scratching my belly all this time, but no, not necessarily. I was actually working really hard. You know, it took me two years to write uh, a little bit over two years. You know, after uh, the tour of the Mongoose ended, um, I just uh, secluded myself in a recording studio and started creating songs and arranging them, arranging the demos and then doing the final tracks. So 
it was it was quite a long process, you know, and working every day until late hours at night. And you wrote a lot of songs, 60 songs. But... I wrote 60 songs. That's a lot. a lot of music, and yeah. then I had to put myself in the difficult task of selecting my favorite uh, songs, which ended up being 20. And, but okay. that was still too much music to put in one CD, and that's why I decided to split it into and release it into different momentums. But it's a repertoire of 20 songs divided in, you know, Oral Fixation Volume 1, which is my Spanish album, Oral Fixation Volume 2, which is entirely new material, uh, new songs, because they're not translations or adaptations or anything. Okay. And you put it your Spanish album first, you said, because you kind of wanted um, your non-Hispanic audience, so to speak, to come familiar with your other artistry. Yeah. But why was it important to kind of integrate both audiences? Uh, well, because, you know, I, I really wanted the non -his my non-Hispanic fans to to sort of get familiar with the other side of my artistry, like you say, you know, I've been singing in Spanish for 14 years, and uh, and it, I, I had a secret illusion of like having someday on the radio, on, on non-Hispanic radios, a song that that was written and recorded in Spanish, and that's actually what happened. So my dream came true, uh, and this time my song like La Tortura, for example, was playing in so many radios all over the world that <laughs> uh, you know, not even in my best dreams. Um, I would imagine, but 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 it but it happens, you know. Nice. Well, we have an audience question from Lorena. Where where are you? Right there. Okay. Hi, Shakira. Hi. How are you? I was just wondering if you ever think that your lyrics get lost in translation, and if so, uh, what language do they have deeper meaning in? Uh, you know, four years ago, I I was in the middle of a struggle. You know, trying to actually write songs in English for the first time, um, and trying to maintain. The, whatever represented me as a songwriter in Spanish. So that was a, an intellectual challenge back then. Um, but this time for oral fixation, actually, I found myself writing in English um, without even planning it. So it was such a natural process this time. And I think these songs are actually so representative of my point of view. And I actually get to uh, touch certain themes and certain topics that... I didn't touch in the, in the Spanish album, for example, some social issues. This this album is, has so much diversity in in, in regards to to the to, to the subjects that 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 it embraces. Wicked. Now you yeah. wrote your first uh, you wrote your first song when you were eight, right? Do you still remember what it was about? Do you still remember yeah. the song or no? I remember. The Do you song. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Can you sing well, a little was... bit of it for us? Or no, 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 no. Come no, on, no. just a little bit. No. I don't know. Oh, what <laughs> just a little bit. No. no. Okay, okay. No, it's such a dramatic song. Yeah? For an eight-year-old woman. It's, yeah? Yeah, it's like... That's why I want to hear it. I think it'd be fabulous. It's like... Exclusive material. Take, you know, take me, protect me under your dark sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Don't allow the sun to touch my skin. Don't, don't allow it to burn me. You know, something like that. It was like... Okay. Beyond. <laughs> now, you did music and you also did some I've acting. always been a drama queen. A drama... You know, well, speaking yeah, of drama even when acting, I was eight. You did some acting, right? But you came That's back to music. So I was yeah. wondering... If you could act out a hot, steamy kissing scene with any Hollywood actor, who would be your co-star? Oh, don't, don't do this to no? me. No? <laughs> who would be your co-star? Who would be that person? Yeah, I, I, have my, I have my fantasies too, you yeah? know, but no, we'll I'm not going to share them on, on public television. Okay, you know? okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> However, um, you also... And my boyfriend didn't hear that. Boyfriend? Fiance, right? You're fiance, <laughs> fiance, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you also have some other creative outlets. You sculpt. You do yeah, some sculpting, yeah, yeah, I like sculpting. It's one of my hobbies, actually. Well, ironically enough, someday I'll enough, invite you to one of my exhibitions. I invited you here to do some sculpting today. Oh, it's no, perfect. come on. <laughs> we have now. We're, no, we're but I don't sculpt like this. I have to build a butt. You oh, know, you really want to? You have to build something big. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, sculpted my my. The latest thing I did was my boyfriend's. Uh, his face, bust. right? Yeah, his. Well, up to here. You know? Oh, you did his full. Yeah. His upper. Okay. And I melted it in. Um, in bronze yeah. and aluminum. Really? Yeah. So you don't think you picture? can sculpt anything in three minutes? We have a break. We can take a break, a commercial break, come back and see what you've made in three minutes. Is that possible or no? <laughs> okay. You're very I got talented. An idea. You got an idea? I got a very good idea. Okay, we'll be back after the break. She's going to have something sculpted. More with Shakira up next. Welcome back to Munch on Demand. We have Shakira. Wow. What, what is that? That's Mac, right there. Yeah, I made, yeah. made Leia. So, 
Shakira's is so much better, man. This is myself and Leia, co-host of Much On Demand. And there's Shakira right there. Thanks for coming back. Yours is better, I gotta say. Really? Yeah. Mine looks like you. The piercing eyes, the pouty lips, and the beautiful golden locks. This is called the scream of Matt. Can we show it? The scream, Matt screaming. It's based on Munch on you. That's why I don't ever munch on you. I like it. Oh, my gosh. We're going to stop your vote, Matt. No, believe me, I'm better. I'm going to send you pictures of what I do. Okay. We can show them on air. <laughs> We're gonna stop that bonus match. Yes, people are voting online right now to pick one of your videos. So let's stop it. Oh, where, wherever, wherever. That's what they picked. Yes. You excited to see that one? Uh, am I gonna see that yeah, one? We're gonna, we're gonna check it out. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks all for stopping by. Really yes, appreciate it.